reflex means what? Light reflex means if I throw light on my one eye, okay, if I take a torch and put light on my one eye, what will be the reaction? The reaction is that there will be, you know, there's your lens here, iris here. So and this part is called pupil. So what will happen? The pupils constrict. So whenever we throw light, pupils constrict. Okay? Pupils constrict means if you look at the eyes from the front, okay, this is the normal pupil. Okay, you'll see this part from the front. This is the normal pupil. And when you put light, the same pupil, it will be constrict. It will become small. Okay, because of the parasympathetic innovation. Okay, the parasympathetic nerves, it makes our pupils small, constrict. Okay, this is called as meiosis or meiosis, constriction of pupil. Okay, and when sympathetic fibers, when sympathetic is innervated, means you are in a panic mode or you are running, you are doing sports or you are frightened, you are anxiety, what is happening? In our body, the sympathetic response is there, heartbeat increase, everything is increased. Okay, in sympathetic response, our pupils dilate because we need more light. We have to look far away. We need more light, and we have to uh, see everything clearly. So, in, when there is sympathetic control, when there is a sympathetic stimulation of the eye, okay, the pupils dilate. What do you call that? My gases or pupils dilate. Okay, and when there is a parasympathetic reaction, pupils constrict. Okay. So same thing happens when you take a torch and we, why you often seen that the doctors, uh, when the patients come, we see, we throw light on one patient's eye or when patient is unconscious, we put light on his eye. What we are trying to do, we are trying to see whether this light reflect is present or not. Okay. What is the importance? I'll tell you. We want to see the light reflex, whether this is present or absent. So what happens when you put the light on someone's eye, when you take a torch and put on the eye, okay. You see that immediately the pupil constrict, it becomes small. Okay. Now, how does it become so? One thing, number one thing is that when you put the light, suppose this is a left eye, when you put the eye, torch, uh, means light on the left eye, you'll see the pupils constrict. Immediately, pupils constrict, it becomes smaller after throwing the light. So, that is called direct light reflex. Direct light reflex. There's another situation here. When you put light on the left eye, we also see that in the right eye also the pupils, which was the pupil which was before like this. When you put light on the left eye, when you put light on the left eye, not only the left eye pupil constricted, the right eye pupil also constricted. Okay, this is called indirect light reflex. Indirect, or in some books it is called consensual. Indirect light reflex. Okay, so when you throw light on one eye, right eye, you see the right eye pupil is constrict. And if you see, if you throw light on my right eye, and if you observe on my left eye, in my left eye also, pupils are constricted. So right eye, left eye, one eye is having direct light reflex, one eye is you throwing light here, but this pupil is also constricted. How? Because there must be something here. Okay, so this is called indirect light reflex. So direct light reflex. Indirect light reflex and what is the real light reflex pathway? Okay, so basically these are done by parasympathetic fibers. Now let me tell you the pathway. Okay, so from beginning to here, let me recap it again. So we know this is optic nerve fibers, temporal fibers, nasal fibers, right? Nasal fibers, temporal fibers because towards the nose is nasal fibers. So nasal fibers cross, this is optic chiasma. Nasal fibers cross, temporal fibers, they go in the same side and these are nasal fibers. They cross, right? So here, this is called this optic tract. Okay, this is called optic tract. This optic nerve, optic chiasma, optic tract, and optic radiation, right? Now there is a more to it in for light reflex. You need to know a little bit more. So from the optic nerve, there are some fibers. It gives some branches here. It gives branches to the midbrain. It gives branches to the midbrain. So no, it gives branches to the midbrain. Okay, from the after crossing here optic chiasma, it gives some downward branches to the midbrain. Okay, 
so downward branches to the mid plane so these are called this is called pretectal nucleus pretectal nucleus of mid plane okay they give branches to the pretectal nucleus okay so from the pretectal nucleus right in front of pretectal nucleus there is another amazing nucleus this is called edinja westphal nucleus okay this is called edinja westphal nucleus edinja westphal nucleus okay so from the pretectal nucleus of the mid brain these fibers there is a there are new fibers going up to the edinja westphal nucleus and not only goes to the same side they also goes to the opposite side So because of this, they are innervating both the edinja westphal nucleus. There is indirect light reflex. So this not only goes, sorry, goes this side. It also goes this side. Okay. So light reflex pathway when you write optic nerve fibers, optic chiasma, optic tract, pretectal nucleus. You will not go this side. Okay. You will just stop here and make a U turn here. pretectal nucleus edinja westphal nucleus and from here from here edinja westphal nucleus where it goes okay. i need some space to just hold on this is called ciliary ganglion is called ciliary ganglion so what are these fibers these are cranial nerve number 3 oculomotor nerve okay so cranial nerve number 3 where it arises from it arises from edinja westphal nucleus so cranial nerve number 3 these are parasympathetic fibers remember cranial nerve number 3 are parasympathetic fibers they are parasympathetic fibers oculomotor nerve Okay, so oculomotor nerve arises from the edinja westphal nucleus and ends up in the ciliary ganglion. From the ciliary ganglion, there are some short ciliary fibers. These are called short ciliary fibers. From the ciliary ganglion, short ciliary fibers. Where they go? They stimulate the they stimulate that now if you remember here here there is the lens and there is the ciliary body the iris and the ciliary body here so they stimulate this this short ciliary fibers they stimulate this they stimulate this short ciliary fibers they stimulate this short ciliary fibers as a result the iris and the ciliary body they constrict so when they constrict the pupils become smaller so as a result this because what is a pupil is is not an anatomical thing pupil is a gap between the two iris so when this iris when the two iris becomes close the pupils become small when the two iris becomes close pupils become small when the iris goes back the pupils become dilated so when there is a parasympathetic fibers they stimulate the ciliary fiber ciliary body Then the eyes they comes close, and yeah? pupils become smaller. Means less amount of light will come into the eye. Okay. So what is the light reflex pathway? Again, it's a circle, right? It's a circle. So let me make a flow chart here. Better. So number one, optic fibers. Then optic nerve. Okay, then optic nerve, then optic chiasma. Okay, optic chiasma, then optic tract, optic tract. Okay, optic tract, then pretectal nucleus. Then is taking a turn now. Edinja westphal nucleus, ciliary ganglion, ciliary ganglion. From ciliary ganglion, short ciliary fibers, short ciliary fibers. 
then ciliary body and constriction pupil constriction pupillary constriction okay pupillary constriction so when there is a light thrown in the pupil pupil becomes small okay so if this is the eyes from the front okay then after throwing light pupil becomes small why because of this pathway now whenever why this is important now the whole thing is controlled by the brain stem you can see this is a midbrain brain stem okay so this is the optic chiasma optic chiasma where the nerves are crossing okay and here there is the edinger vestal nucleus oh sorry pretectal nucleus the brain stem so it's also from the optic tract some it also sends fibers to the brain stem so whenever there is any brain stem lesion any tumor in the brain stem road, road traffic accidents means when there is a injury here in the brain stem okay in the brain stem here okay not the cerebral cortex okay where there, when there is a injury here light reflex is lost that's the clinical significance when person is unconscious he comes out of the road traffic accident we show we try to open his eyes and put a torch and see people are constricting or not it can also happen in barbiturates or drugs poisoning also okay so we see that whether his pupils are reacting or not his pupils are reacting to light means pupils are constricting means this part is okay brain stem is okay everything is okay okay if pupils are not reacting to light it means the problem is here somewhere near the pretectal edinger vestibule problem is here so that's why it's very important to assess the light reflex in every unconscious patient okay sometimes patient they do uh, some you know what they say they do some sort of, sort of functional behavior functional behavior means they most of the time because of some uh, psychological problems they pretend that they are unconscious they pretend that they will come to the casualties like unconscious as if they are unconscious most of the time it happens during before exams some students are not prepared and they do this type of things and okay to escape from the exam so they go to the casualty and they say uh, parents will bring them all everyone is panicking that they are unconscious and just take a torch and put light on this eye people are reacting we send them back nothing is serious okay so that's why this is very important so this is the what is called light reflex pathway do you have any questions Okay, you understood. So you can ask me now if you have any questions. Yeah. Yes. Um, you mentioned that uh, when a person is unconscious, that's yeah. when the pupil will not respond to the light. Yes. What will happen in case that the pupil will not respond? I I can't get your last what you said. What will happen? Is it uh, something to do with the nerve fibers or optic nerve that a person is unconscious and it does not respond no, no, no. or what? You, you didn't get me. People will not respond if there is any injury here. So we are trying to exclude there is, if there is any brain stem lesion. Okay? If there is an injury in the cerebral cortex, these people will react. But if there is an injury in the brain stem, his pupils will not react because this edinger vestibular nucleus, pretectal nucleus, they are in the brain stem. Okay, they are below the optic chiasma. They are in the brain stem. So if when there is a brain stem lesion, okay, so and there is a brain stem lesion here, because here there is the, this is the pons, this is medulla. So above it there is this pretectal and edinger vestibular nucleus. So when these nucleus are involved. then light reflex will be absent okay whether patient is conscious or unconscious doesn't matter but when these are involved when they are damaged they are hurt then light reflex will be absent that's how why we should do that we trying to exclude the brain stem lesion we try to diagnose whether the unconscious is because of brain stem or because of other things so whenever they will be involved light reflex will be absent though there are some more to it okay but try to i'm just trying to make it simple okay If when the brain stem is involved, edinger vestibular nucleus is involved, pretectal nucleus is involved, light reflex is absent. You are throwing light, and his pupils are not reacting to light. It's fixed and dilated. It's fixed. 